So I thought I'd just do a quick tutorial on an effect that I've sort of been developing recently, which is sort of a zoom blur transition that you can use to go from one clip to another. Now I made a video a while ago and quite a few comments uh, were put on this video about how I achieved this actual kind of transition. So if we just start off by having a quick look at that video. So this is a video of mine that I made while I was traveling in Romania and you'll go about to see the effect come up in a few of these shots here and you'll see that the transition appears to zoom in to one clip and then zoom out of the other one. So hopefully you get the idea of that. So we'll just start off here in Adobe Premiere and we've got two clips and this is just a very basic example to get you started. We're actually using some skiing footage and as you see here we've got first clip here which is skier heading into the woods and then there's the cut and then he's in the woods skiing. Now in itself it's not the worst cut in the world. Um, it sort of flows okay but it's slightly jarring in the fact that we have him in frame in one shot and then the beginning of the next clip he's just coming into frame so there's a bit of a, a jump there it's a bit jarring obviously with the speed that he's traveling it kind of covers that up a little bit but what we can actually do is use this sort of zoom blur transition to sort of mask that and actually give it a more of a creative effect so i typically do this through after effects so if we just jump into after effects and i've already got the clips queued up in here so i'll start by doing is making sure that i have my edits in the right point so for example if we just jump back quickly into premiere the the jump the cut there was the last couple of frames of him just entering the woods and then the first frame he's already in the woods now but he's entering the frame from the left and then skiing into the middle of the frame like so so i've got my cut exactly where i want it to be so let's head back to after effects and then what I'm going to do is literally zoom in on the outgoing clip and then zoom out on the incoming clip. Now, it might just sound a little bit confusing. So I've gone ahead and I've already put in some keyframes. These are position and scale keyframes. And literally in the last few frames of the outgoing clip, I've put a keyframe just to mark that it's 100%, so no, nothing's happening at the moment. The position is the normal position of the frame. But then what you'll see is we start to zoom in quite heavily. Now let's just move these two keyframes. So I have zoomed in from 100% up to almost 300%, and you'll see also that I've changed the position of the frame. So it zooms right down into the bottom right-hand corner of the frame. Now let's go over to, before we complete the transition, let's go over to the incoming clip. Now the incoming clip does reverse. It starts really zoomed in and then we'll move, as you can see, so I move out to the normal size about five or six frames into the clip. So let's go back to the top clip. What I will do is we'll start that with normal and then about five frames to the end of the clip I will put some keyframes in, just as I've done here, and then I will go ahead and I will really zoom in, scale it up, and change the position to where I want it to be. I'll then move those keyframes just to a frame after the end of that clip. And that's so that the zoom has the appearance of carrying on through the end of the first clip and then beginning, so it's always a zooming motion. We go from zooming in, to zooming out like so. So I'll keyframe them just towards the end and then on the incoming clip, what I'll do is I'll start with that really zoomed in. And what I'm looking for is that the last, very last frame that we see of the first clip should have quite a similar look to the first frame of the next clip. And you can see that we've generally just got a lot of snow. We can just see a little bit of the trees there. And on the first frame, once again, we've got a lot of snow and a lot of trees. Now, something that you might have noticed that's a little bit off, let me just zoom in a little bit, is that the exposure of the shot and the, the color temperature is slightly different. So we can change that in grading just to give it a more kind of fluid look. So let's just go ahead and play through what we've got. And there we see it's a very quick but subtle effect that just takes us 
out of one shot and into the other nice and fluidly. Now, to really sell this effect, what you need to make sure you turn on is motion blur. So once you've got your keyframe set, you want to go over and make sure on the clips that you have motion blur turned on. And what you'll also need to make sure that you do is make sure that it's turned on for the composition. So you click it on here and then make sure that each individual clip has got motion blur selected. Without the motion blur, we just have a zoom effect and it just really doesn't look right. It doesn't look any way natural. It looks very jerky. Let's just play that through. And there we go. You see, it's just a really unnatural effect. The blur helps almost kind of cover over the imperfections and really sell the effect. So let's just go ahead and turn the motion blur back on. And you can see there, we've got nice amounts of motion blur. So that's just a basic introduction of how to get started in using After Effects to create a motion blur zoom transition. Now there's all sorts of creative possibilities with this and this is just a very kind of basic tutorial and overview. So what I'll do now just to finish up is I will give the clips a quick grade, just tweak that transition and then render out the final video uh, so you can see what that looks like.